Mint a szesztek, a volme kancsincsa, már csak a tele, ez kondai, a tepulcse, a rencsaren, a gész már popotana, a gész gólmicsin play, a kestin a tavart, és a nart, a quick meal, a jake array, a sinyú, a szakru, a interstellarulcsen, a lilleny am the keske. I guess, Tanisha, there's no doubt that much has changed in the 15 years since the Good Friday Agreement was signed. And the agreement was about peace, and it was also about prosperity. And I'm delighted that it has brought about peace. That has played a, a huge part uh, and changed uh, society north and south. And that huge change is a credit to all the political leaders who played a, a very positive role in the Good Friday Agreement and who have played a positive part in the institutions that have been created since then. The prosperity promised in the agreement has yet to be realised, though. Fifteen years on, we must ask if the economic potential of the agreement has been unleashed. In other words, have our people, north and south, benefited economically from the dynamic of change the Good Friday Agreement set in place? And the answer is an obvious no, and that needs to change. In my view, that is best brought about, that change is best brought about in the context of Irish unity of one economy on the island of Ireland. But in the meantime, as we strive to get there, there is no excuse for breaking down the barriers and making an all-Ireland economy work. And this means empowering the Assembly to have its own levers to bring about change and to set an economic policy that is decided here in Ireland for the benefit of, it, of the people who live here on this island. The fact is that the Assembly has not been allowed to do what it is set up to do. It has been frustrated by the lack of fiscal powers. The model of funding for the North is based on an English model and it is not sustainable in the six counties. Indeed, the British Government recognised that this same model that applies in Wales and Scotland is broken. The full transfer of fiscal powers to the Assembly is a necessary step in allowing politicians uh, elected in the North to deal with the realities of people in the North. That is their job, and they should be empowered to do it. And this is also a vital step in the creation of a real all-Ireland economy, which serves the interests of all the Irish people. We need to have an all-Ireland economy, and that requires the Assembly taking on fiscal powers. The unleashing of the all-Ireland economic system can play a major part in the recovery this whole island is crying out for. An economy of 6.4 million citizens, consumers and taxpayers will be a stronger basis for creating prosperity than two separate competing economies. That is undeniable. A united Ireland makes economic sense. And the economic potential of the North, and indeed the South within a united Ireland, has yet to be properly debated. It is not beneficial to have an island nation of 6.5 million people on the edge of Europe split into two separate tax currency and legal systems, and two separate economies with split populations of 4.6 million and 1.9 million. It is no coincidence that some of the poorest and disadvantaged counties are sitting either side of this border. Businesses, farmers, citizens every day suffer because of the border. An all-Ireland economy, Athanasia, is the way forward. And our future is in taking possession of the tools required to devise and implement fiscal policies to match the needs of our people. It is in concentrating on building a strong, sustainable, all-Ireland economy that, while welcoming foreign direct investment, will allow indigenous businesses to flourish and access export markets independent of Britain's economic interests. Almost all political voices in the six counties want corporation tax transferred to the Assembly, yet their united demands have been deflected by London. It is, it, the question has to be asked, is this the spirit in which the Good Friday Agreement was entered into? Sinn Féin have shown how an All-Ireland's jobs plan and an economic planning make sense. We owe it to the people of Dublin, of Cork, of Dundalk, Cross McGlen and Donegal to run this small island in a coordinated way. The alternative is a waste of money and back-to-back -back services. I am aware that many members on the back benches of Labour and Fine Gael have since the last election discovered an interest in what happens in the six counties, and I welcome that interest, but unfortunately it is mainly founded on political cynicism and ignorance of reality in the north of the country. I hope these members will take the opportunity of supporting this motion and do something positive for people in the north 
and here in the South. I challenge every TD and party here tonight to support this motion, to support democratising our economic future by centering it on an island and the support and to support the unleashing the economic potential latent in our island, but kept down by the old school thinking and outdated politics. Thank you. I now call on